Hey guys, what is going on? And welcome back to my home workbench here. I'm Dan, as always, and in this video, we're going to be doing something really cool. Uh, this is something I get asked about all the time. Again, is the locomotive detailing and weathering, um, and it's something I do very rarely now to be honest. Uh, I used to be able to crank out locomotives like crazy when I was a little younger but uh, nowadays it's just kind of one of those things. I'm such a perfectionist as you guys know and so locomotives are one thing uh, they require detailing, they require weathering, uh, all kinds of modifications. I'm, I'm very 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 specific with my locomotives because I pay such attention to my freight cars. Locomotives are even bigger because you know, I think with locomotives you should try to get those as accurate as possible. If you're going to do this kind of work, why not try to weather them accurately? Why not try to detail them accurately? The photos are there for you to look up. Uh, look, freight cars, like I said, for one thing, most of the time I try to be pretty accurate with my freight cars. Sometimes you can't find the, freight, the, the pictures for freight cars. Um, however, with locomotives, there are always photos of these things available. And so, I look at it this way, there's really no excuse why you can't model something. Uh, there are some exceptions sometimes where models are inaccurate and they require so much work that it's almost pointless and you end up destroying the model. Uh, I get that. But in most cases with the models that they come out now where uh, most of these are Athens Genesis quality units, uh, they're well detailed and they're relatively accurate right out of the box, there's no real excuse why you can't finish them off and to make them look like the real things. And so that's just my thoughts on locomotive detailing. That's why I do it like I do. Uh, and like I said, everybody wants to know how I do this stuff. That's my explanation of why I do it like that. Now to get into it. I, uh, I make most of my details from scratch. Uh, certain things I can fabricate from styrene. And I do this, uh, I've done this well for um, quite a few years now. Matter of fact, since I started modeling diesel locomotives, I've been making my own parts. It's a great cost effective way. Parts like snow plows, you know, coupler bars, stuff like that. Um, well, minus coupler bars, I can do, you know, I can buy the parts for that stuff you can't just really make from scratch, horn casting, stuff like that, AC units, I'll buy those parts, but for stuff like MU cables, coupler bars, you know, stuff like that, um, I'll try to make from scratch, and you guys will see how I do some of these parts, especially on the field tech when we get to it. But overall, this will be a modeling video of the Union Pacific 2203. I'll go ahead and show you guys on my workbench the model before we start and you guys will uh, get to see uh, the process of the breakdown, how I'll go about changing some details, how I'll go about adding details, making details, uh, and then uh, paint touch-up and all that. And then in a separate video you guys will see the weathering process. Um, I won't show it all in this video obviously because we have a lot to cover with the detailing. Even though this locomotive in particular isn't the biggest detailing project, it still will require some work. So I think it'll be a good way to kind of get into this. We'll see how this thing goes and maybe I'll do another one down the road. We'll see. But anyways guys, we'll go ahead and get started. I hope you enjoy this and uh, sit back and enjoy. So here is the gorgeous model you will be detailing and weathering. Uh, it is Union Pacific 2203, and it is an SD60 in the Modern Lightning Bolt scheme. Uh, this is a relatively recent release from Athern, uh, and they're ready to roll line with the DCC Quick Plug board. Um, it's a very nice model. I'm very glad I finally got my hands on one of these. Uh, I've wanted one for a little bit, or quite some time rather, um, and I just haven't been able to find one. But I recently got this one on eBay for a crazy good deal. And I'm really happy about it. This is a modern locomotive. I've been, like I said, needing one of these for quite some time. And I'm really happy to have it. So it'll be a great canvas for all of the weathering and detailing. And a model like this is a great starting point because it's not too far off from the real thing as I'll show. Um, but basically, when I get a model like this, we get to the first stage of the building process itself. What stays and what goes. Okay? Let's so memorize that. Uh, and if any of you guys build locomotives like I do, you know exactly what I'm talking about. A model like this from Atherin or Atlas or Walther's, wherever you're getting a good locomotive like this from, generally they do a pretty decent job of making sure that they're detailed uh, correctly, that they're in the right font, that the paint's right, everything like that. They do a, a relatively good job. However, sometimes companies like Atherin do slip up and they put the wrong snow plows, the wrong horns, parts are in the wrong place, and that's stuff you need to watch out for. However, if you're a modeler that just takes these things right out of the box and weathers them and throws on the layout, then don't worry about it. But if you're a prototype modeler like I am, locomotives are where you obsess the most. And for me, I'm very anal about locomotives because freight cars you can get away with certain things. 
Uh, if you, you can look at a hundred pictures of freight cars and really get the basic idea. And you can do the same thing with locomotives, but for the most part, locomotives, there's always photos for locomotives, and there's usually plenty of angles, so there's no excuse as to why you can't do it right. And since, like I said, I'm a prototype modeler, I like to get things as realistic and close to the real things as possible. So locomotives are where I, I really stretch that extra effort, and I'm always finding new ways to detail and, uh, you know, modify locomotives to make them look as realistic as possible. Uh, but this is, it will be a good starting point because it's not too complicated, I know for a fact, um, but there are some things that we will need to change. And I will go ahead and open up my computer and we can compare the model to prototype photos. Okay, so I am getting my prototype reference from NeuroPictureArchives.net, and this is one of my favorite sites for any reference on locomotives, freight cars, anything like that uh, related to the railroad. Great resource, and it's a great way to reference uh, photos for particular prototypes, especially locomotives in this case. And as we can see, I've looked up the real Unipacific 2203 and the Unipacific Locomotive Gallery under the model EMDSD60. And of course, if you want to, you can go through their entire roster and find particular locomotives, or you can type the particular serial number, the locomotive number, obviously, anything like that, and you can cut uh, corners and uh, look up something up uh, relatively quick. So as you can see, we have quite a few photos of this unit going all the way up to 2014, which is right in my time range of modeling. So these will be helpful. Uh, as you can see, we got plenty of good side shots of this engine, uh, like this one here, which is very helpful. Um, you guys can see real quick, I'm going to point out the weathering on this, which we will get to in a minute. You can see it's a relatively fresh repaint as of 2005. It didn't get too heavily weathered. However, this is a common example of a locomotive that accumulated a little bit of grime on the trucks. So you can see that very light brownish grime, and I call this Union Pacific Road grime, <laughs> essentially, because it's a very light, and it's essentially a grime wash, is the best way i found to uh, represent this. You can see it's touching the uh, pilot steps, it's on the pilots directly, uh, it's splashed up on the fuel tanks. The fuel tank itself is relatively clean, uh, but the trucks in particular are pretty grimy. You got all the details on the trucks there, and then on the high hood, you got a basic wash, uh, very light, a little bit of exhaust streaking, stuff like that. Uh, so it's pretty accurate right out of the box from what I can tell. One thing I will note here, the locomotive does have MU cables and coupler bars which are in the accurate locations. Uh, however, what's missing on the engine is the um, ditch lights and the knuckle brackets, which are basic parts that uh, Atherin usually doesn't install on any of these older runs. So you can see the knuckle brackets here and the ends of the pilots, I'll have to add those. Uh, I'll have to add some fuel tank detailing. On the lead truck here, you guys can see that speed recorder cable that runs up to the, uh, right underneath the second battery box under the cab. That's not there on the model, and that's something I will have to add uh, when we get to it. Um, as we reference other photos here, you guys can look real quick. I'm going to pull up this one. Okay, perfect. Now, as you look at the pilot, you see a snow plow, right? This is called a Union Pacific North Little Rock plow. And it's a very particular style of plow that only Union Pacific uses. And uh, the model comes with an SP style snow plow, which is a lot larger and it's a, bis a bit of a different design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to kit bash that plow or modify it a little bit uh, to be a little bit more accurate to this style plow. We'll get to that when uh, the time comes. Also, you guys can see ditch lights. Uh, as of uh, this unit had ditch lights in the early 2000s. They stayed on there, of course, obviously because of the uh, it's a modern requirement. They're still on there on the real locomotive, and they're just tucked underneath the anti climber. So I will have to asso also asso. <laughs> Did you hear me on that one? That's a good one. Uh, no, seriously, we'll have to actually add the ditch lights to the model. So that'll be an interesting little thing I'll be able to show you guys when we get to it. Uh, looking at the roof real quick, it's not too far off. I can see a little e uh, EOT antenna on the roof, and the AC unit here is painted silver. On the model, it is gray, so we'll have to change that. Of course, there's the weathering again, and then there's some detailing on the, uh, the uh, fuel tank anyways that we will have to add along with this uh, little visor here, which is not on the model. Something else that we will have to add. So again, just some basic detail parts that we'll have to add. You can see this large grab iron here, this grab iron on the roof. We'll have to add all those parts uh, when the time comes. Stepping out here, here's one more side shot, another really good side shot of this unit as of 2014. You can see the heavy grime on the trucks, darkened grills, something else we'll have to do. Now something else I want to point out, if you look at the cab roof, 
See the K3 horn? On the model, this is an RS3L, and um, we're going to have to change that around. So I have the appropriate castings to fix that, so we'll be good on that. Of course, there's the visor again. We'll have to add that part. And then there's the grab irons, and there's the snow plow I just talked about in the ditch lights. Uh, one last thing I'll point out on this side. Notice the chipping on the flanking letters on the high hood. See that? The I and F are chipping away and they're becoming that white graphic underneath uh, where the red, that reflective material on the graphic is peeled off and it reveals that white like uh, backing. So we'll model that. That's an easy thing to do. You'll see the fuel tank. You can see the bleached paint or the chipping paint. We'll model that as well. So this is all stuff we'll take into account. Uh, it's good to get as many angles as a locomotive like this as possible. That way you know how to accurately model it, what needs to be taken off, what needs to be added, stuff like that. Uh, something else I will point out too, the model does have the yellow sill stripe, which is correct. As you guys do know though, I always add the reflective tape to my locomotives just like I do in my freight cars. Since I put real reflective tape on my real cars, I, I figure, you know, why not go the extra mile and put it just like you would on the locomotive. So, I'm going to add the reflective tape to the sills on this engine as well when we get to that. So, the, overall, it's a pretty accurate model. Not too much to do, but there's still enough to do that you guys will get the basic idea of uh, modifica uh, modifications. So, starting at the front of this locomotive, there's some parts that we first need to remove and save. Uh, in particular, the AC unit, which we'll have to remove for painting. It's also in the incorrect location. It's a little farther back on the cab roof, and it's supposed to be a little more forward. Uh, so we'll have to take that off. I have a chisel blade on my X-Acto, and I usually take these to take the AC units off. And you don't have to get violent with these. I know you guys are thinking I'm gonna damage this, but really, it's not too hard. You just get under here, like this. And you just try to wedge the knife blade underneath the AC unit. I gotta get it at the right angle here. Basically like that, and you just lift up on it a little bit, and it'll come right off. So, as you can see, uh, it's actually not painted under here, which is kind of weird. So I'll have to clean this up a little bit and repaint that. Um, most of that will get covered up by the AC unit again once we uh, put it back on. Um, I also have to remove the firecracker and tin in the back here. That's not on the real engine. Uh, and basically I'll just take some pliers and just very carefully wiggle it back and forth just a little bit right at the base. You want to be careful with parts like these because you can reuse them, but you don't want to damage them. So you just want to carefully try to remove them. So see, there you have a firecracker for another build right there. And it's a part that costs $4.75. Well, you can reuse that and save money. And that's why it's uh, really nice to save parts like these. Set that aside. And then one more, one more piece that we'll remove on the pilot here, actually two, is the snow plow. Um, it's uh, a large SP style plow. The one we need to make is a Little Rock style plow, which is a bit smaller. So I'm going to take the blade again and get underneath the plow like this. And I'm just going to try to pop it off the pilot. Carefully as I can here. Just wedge it under there. Sometimes it helps. You can flip it over. There we go. And then I'm also going to remove the air hoses on both ends. And then the cab roof, you have the incorrect horn. Oops. Focus. Come on. Damn, come on. There we go. Okay. This is another valuable part. You can save this and reuse it. I have a ton of these uh, castings off of other Athrum units I've uh, taken apart. What you use to get the horns off is a pair of pliers like this. Very fine jeweler's tweezers, something like that. 
and you just get underneath the casting. I scratched it there a little bit, but that's okay. And you just basically try to wiggle it around a little bit to loosen it up. You guys can see I bent the bells up a little bit, but that's all right. It's uh, brass, so these are easy to bend back to shape. It's not too crazy. Now that I've gotten that lifted up just a little bit, I'll go ahead and finish it off with my needle nose pliers. And you just lift up, hold it down, and just pop the part out. There we go. One thing I'm going to also go ahead and take off now while I have the chance is the handrails. Um, we're going to need to get on the hood here and everything else for weathering later. And of course to put the uh, reflective tape on the sills. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take them off. And I just use an X-Acto blade and just carefully get underneath the stanchions and just lift them up. It's very easy and it only takes a couple minutes. The front handrails and the back handrails are a bit of a trick but you just want to be careful with those. Be careful around the cab and just be careful not to scratch any paint. Okay, so one other thing we got to cut off of the model is the marker or the class lights on the nose here. They're there on the model, uh, but they're not on the prototype. They'll usually take these off before they rebuild the engines or repaint them. And that's the case with this particular engine. So what I have is another brand new uh, number two Exacto chisel blade. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the blade and just very carefully get it at an angle so I can start shaving off the class light one little bit at a time. And I just want to take my time with this. Don't try to rush something like this. Uh, we will have to touch the paint up obviously in a couple of places in particular on the nose but generally with this you want to just try to uh, make it so you only take off what you need and you don't damage anything else that way there's less touch up to do. So just take your time shave one little bit off at a time and then I'll be able to finish this off with sandpaper once we get them off. Alright, so with them taken off, I can go ahead and take a sanding stick. And I'm using a coarse stick here. And I'm just going to go in. And I'm just going to make little circular motions around it very gently. Just applying all the pressure into that direct area. Nothing else. I don't want to scratch up any other paint, especially the logo. I actually accidentally damaged the logo there, as you can see. Uh, it's not the worst, but it is noticeable. I'll just uh, weather over that and say it's just another little weathering touch, like maybe a, you know, it got scratched up or something in service. So we'll just let that slide for now. But that's, again, stressing the point. You just really need to be watching when you do this stuff. That way you don't damage stuff like a Union Pacific Shield or scraping paint off a grab iron or something, you know, unnecessary like that. Just be careful and take your time. I'll go over this again with a fine sanding stick once I get most of the particles off with the uh, coarse sanding here. Something else I want to talk about just very briefly before I do the modification is the plow. As you can see it's the uh, large SP style snow plow like I said on the model um, but on the prototype it's a North Little Rock plow. So what I'm going to do with this plow here uh, is just make a makeshift North Little Rock style plow by modifying the wings and angle and contour of this plow here by cutting it up and reforming it just a little bit with my exacto knife and a pair of uh, jeweler's pliers. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do and I'll come back in a second and show you guys what that looks like once I get it finished.